Stuttgart, 1931. Hitler is blazing a trail towards power in Germany, while company founder Robert Bosch becomes a father for the last time. Eva and her brother Robert, three years older, grow up in Nazi Germany and easily fall victim to the ever-present Nazi propaganda. Despite their father being a supporter of the resistance, Eva joins the Jung Mädelbund and only gradually gets a picture of the consequences. Gerade weil er sich wirklich engagiert hat und den Widerstand unterstützt hat. It was because of his commitment and because he supported the resistance that we the kids knew nothing. You had to be very careful. He couldn't just tell us not to go to the Jung Mädelbund or to the Jung Folk where my brother was going. Anyway, it wasn't the case in our family. We went to these organizations and I really liked it a lot. And one time, it is a story I have told many times, he was talking to a guest whose name I can't remember. My father was so desperate and angry that he just cried out, why doesn't anybody kill that guy? Immediately I understood who he was talking about and I was horrified. I thought, oh my God, what on earth is he saying there? And actually, I was ashamed to have a father who said things like he was saying. Und ich habe mich eigentlich geschämt, dass ich einen Vater habe, der so was sagt. Eva Madelung wrote a partly biographic novel about her experiences, Reden bevor es zu spät ist. With striking openness, she talks about the blinding power of propaganda and the tough process of coming to terms with the past in post-war Germany. Naja, ich war eine begeisterte Nationalsozialist. Well, I was an enthusiastic National Socialist while I was still going to the Jung Mädelbund. And that led me to write this book. The female protagonist is eight years older than I am, and I thought, if I would have been eight years older at that time, I would have been totally into it. Maybe even because my father was against the regime, just to act out of spite. Somehow, I was fascinated, and I can totally understand how people could fall for it. That's why I wrote this book. Today, when people say it wouldn't have happened to them, it's just because they don't know what they are talking about. At least, that's how I see it. Slowly, bit by bit, I started to realize that in our family and with our father there had been something going on, that he stood on the right side and that I might have felt ashamed of him initially, but actually, I can be very proud of him. Eva Madelung doesn't have any desire to work in her father's company. Her true passions are literature, dance, and sculpting. Apart from that, she also makes a successful career as a family therapist. I always had the great advantage of being able to do what I wanted to do. I was able to perform arts like sculpting because I could afford it and because the housemaid ensured that lunch was ready and the kids were being looked after. But maybe it was because I had enough money that I always wanted to work like other people and be able to say that if necessary, I could earn my own money. I never thought I was going to be a therapist. I always figured I was going to be a writer. For some time, I even wanted to become an actress, but that was a long time ago. It just happened mostly because of some problems I had. And I was able to deal with these psychosomatic problems through therapy, on the one hand, and by reading C.G. Young, on the other hand. I was reading C.G. Young a lot. And as I came to notice that I got over these problems, I started thinking that must be a great job. Eigentlich müsste das ein toller Beruf sein. Und hatte damals schon die Idee, Psychoanalytik zu and so I had the idea to study psychoanalysis. But then I became pregnant again, and it would have been too much for me to study four evenings a week. Then I got the possibility to do a co-therapy with a psychotherapist I knew, who was a professor at the local university. And slowly I slipped into a career in therapy, 
followed by all kinds of qualifications, and not until the end did I end up in family therapy. Also wir haben ja das lösungsorientierte Vorgehen in der Therapie, also nicht das problemorientierte, wo man dann immer schaut. In therapy, we have a solution-oriented approach, not the problem-oriented one where you look at everything that used to be, where you ask for the problems and for what went wrong. Instead, you look into the future and try to think starting from the end. How will it look when it's been solved? What will happen in the meantime? you point out potential solutions to present a certain choice. You look into the future. The Bosch family ties are strongly connected through a broad range of non-profit activities. The entrepreneur Robert Bosch was always influenced by a profound humanism, reflected in numerous donations, but also in the foundation of the Robert Bosch Hospital in 1942 during the war. Von meinem Vater gibt es ja das berühmte Diktum, sei Mensch und ehre Menschenwürde. Damit ist schon sehr viel gesagt. Also gegenseitiger Respekt. My father coined the famous phrase, act human and honor the dignity of man. This means a lot, namely mutual respect. As soon as he was making good money, he started making large donations. His first donation was for the Polytechnic University in Stuttgart where he wasn't even registered due to his bad formal education, and we continued this tradition in our family. We were in large part paid out by the company back then, and that was a lot of money. My brother and I decided to take half of it to start our own foundation. That was also in view of the fact that we had already been making larger donations for quite some time. So we came to the conclusion that it would be much better to have a foundation where we can fund all the things that are near and dear to us personally. And it makes sense when there is even more money to benefit the public good. So, for both of us, it was an easy decision to make and one that relieved us. We also had the Robert Bosch Stiftung as an example. My brother went through all the formalities, and I happily joined in. The Heidehoff Stiftung was founded in 1971 as a foundation for the education and support of disabled people. One of its biggest awards is the German School Award, which it gives together with the Robert Bosch Stiftung. Also was ich immer wieder erlebt habe, was eine wichtige Rolle der Stiftungen ist, dass sie sehr viel schneller als staatliche Institutionen In my experience, one of the most important roles of foundations in general is to fund things that are new much quicker than state-controlled institutions. To initiate something that wasn't there before or to test something to see if it's useful and if it might get support by the state afterwards. There are also critics who accuse foundations of being undemocratic and that only one or two people decide what they do. But I think the government also makes mistakes. And I strongly believe there will never be enough foundations out there. 